Hello there and welcome to episode 26 of my advanced tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In this one we are going to build a nice little pump stack for that magma. Originally, originally I thought that I'd be pumping that stuff all the way back up somewhere like here and then we might make a nice magma forge somewhere around there. But then I realized that I would do that during my own gameplay series and stuff like that. But for a tutorial series, this would go way beyond. So instead, we're going to make a magma workshop down below. So we're going to take the magma from here, upstairs one, two, three, and then we're going to pipe, going to pipe it around and make a nice uh, reservoir here. And then I'm going to set up a workshop here, utilizing the magma that we got. And I'm also considering to utilize this maybe as a uh, bit of a disposal zone for, for monsters. Who knows, you know, you can have a lot of fun with magma. Magma is fun. And therefore, we're going to work with magma today. So for that regard, I'm going to work like this. So we're going to set up the entry point for that system here. So I'm digging a ramp upstairs to this point. Give me a sec. Yeah, we need to work around with that a little bit more, I think. Is that one better? Not really. That one's good. Never, never mind me. So uh, we're, we're going to work upstairs. <laughs> All right. So the first thing that we got to do is we have to set up um, this kind of a maintenance system, you know? Every pump, pump stack, in my opinion, migrants, should have some, some sort of a maintenance uh, entrance, you know? And therefore, we're going to pump the magma from here, I decided. So let's wait for our brave miners to come. And in the meantime, I have also prepared a little bit of uh, resources that we can work with, namely the building parts for the screw pumps, because I, I didn't want to have to wait for these things to get done. Because, you know, ideally I want to complete this pump stack in this episode. So yeah, currently, we're uh, waiting for people to make to get the job done, and uh, the the access to the deep mine has been completed now, which is really really great. And here we see one of our new dabbling miners. I've employed a few new people here. So the first thing that we got to do is we got to get ourselves access. So here is how this will go. We'll have the stick that out like that right now yeah we'll have the magma extracted here then the magma will get pumped upwards here so this is going to be one of the first things that we got to do so here has to be the magma upwards and this will be then the rest of the pump stack here we go so most importantly now we're going to have this sort of a maintenance layout now for the remainder of the pump stack. All right. And with that principle, you can also work with um, water. It does work exactly the same. So really important when we set these up. Where is it at? Blind here. <laughs> sometimes. Very important when we uh, set these up is that everything in this thing must be made out of lava uh, magma safe material. In our uh, scenario we're using green glass because that stuff is just uh, featuring exactly these um, characteristics that we're looking for. So now next step we want to... oh wait a sec I'm actually one grid off here. Whoopsie. That doesn't matter. We're going to go there. And here we will punch a hole in there and construct a ramp. This is uh, going to be quite uh, comfy for our folks, but I want to choose which material 
because uh, I don't want them to use my valuable green glass blocks again, you know? My folks have a tendency of doing this. So. Dehydrated folks. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember. That was the uh, latest failed artifact. <laughs> my bad. Okay, so let's wait until these things are somewhat set up. And most importantly, we need to build now kind of a casing for, for this whole thing. Because one thing I really do not want, and that's magma splishing and sploshing around, there's nothing more deadly than magma in this game, basically. So you really, really better be careful with what we're doing here. So we're flooring this place. Also, I'm, I'm doing this a little bit more generous than I actually need, because it's always easier for me to conceptualize these things um, when, when I actually uh, fully understand them here. So, unusable slope, of course. It's unusable because it has no wall um, right next to it. These things can only work with walls around them. So, speaking about walls, I want, I want some. So... Here we go. So, yeah, this is looking just like what we want to have. Here goes that. Here goes that. And that. Alright, so uh, this is the basic layout. Okay, so you might wonder now that this is a little bit uh, displaced, but uh, there is a purpose behind that. So there are several ways how you can power a pump stack. Thing is, every screw pump can be either be can either be driven automatically, as we know, or it can be um, powered by dwarf power. In this scenario today we're going to go with the dwarf power and you could totally automate that thing but I, I don't want to build a entire how to call it a entire um, power generator now just for the sake of that because you know that would go too far this time in my humble opinion at least. So let's suspend the construction of the screw pump for a moment until this here has been finished because it's really important that we have the casing here done. And they're uh, already getting ahead of themselves. So let's suspend that wall here as well so they can bring up that piece of floor. Silly old goofballs. So we got here the entrance point for that. Now, we're going to dig an upward slope here. Ah, here we go. That worked out well. And now, well, we have to think for our dwarves, you know, and build those walls accordingly. So that means, I hate to do this, but it is necessary. I need to suspend these so they get built in the correct order, because the game can't compute that by itself by now. Quite tragic, I know, I know, but uh, it is as it is. Alrighty. So I need to pay close attention here myself. Oh no, more cavern dwellers. So luckily the cavern dwellers get attacked by a local monster hunter. There we go. A monster slayer, let's see. He's grinding up his skill points, and now he's dying. Well, of course, of course. Typical outcome. But luckily this time I got the beak dogs as a, uh, as a warning system. But nevertheless, uh, I'm going to um, station my military here. 
I got a bad feeling about this. You know, we're we're doing so much construction down here, and with all the civilians abroad, I'd better be, I'd be better off with uh, guarding my folks here. I know that already. I know my dwarfs, you know. And uh, typically, these guys should be now wanting to exact uh, an attack on us. So here we go. It's a little bit annoying, but uh, it's a necessary evil. There we go. I knew it'll happen. So I'm going to stamp down my, my military here. Because, you know... This is just uh, ought to happen because the civilian dudes now want to rescue the other dudes and now, well, there would be a steady flow of civilian dwarves coming to this place, but uh, instead we're just going to slaughter all the rodent men. This is one of the problems of this place here, honestly. I... It, it is... It, it's always quite random what kind of uh, problems your fortress has, you know? And that's even worse. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to get rid of that infestation and come right back after. So, forgive me the interruption. I have taken care of all the rodent men down there, and uh, I gotta say, it's been quite a few. And now we got that casing here done as well, because I've taken the liberty of completing that. So. In short, as soon as the screw pump is installed, one dwarf can stand here and just pump that magma upstairs. And upstairs, we have now the construction that the magma will be transported from here to over there, and then from here to over there, and from here to over there, and uh, yeah, well. Then we will have the stuff on the uh, level where we want to have it, but let's continue the casing. So. This variant that I'm building is uh, going to work completely with dwarf power, but I'm going to build it as if we were building it with electrical power or mechanical power. So the next step now is that we punch through this place and uh, and we make the, the upwards tunnels that we need. So first off, we need to go upstairs here again. And go upstairs here again or no we actually don't need to go upstairs here again because we are here already at the end of our journey so that's going to be like that okay so there we go and the next step now will be that we're going to punch a hole upstairs here as well and here as well yeah and then here as well so I'll I'll explain the the purpose of these ramps in a second and the last three tiles can be excavated like that. So now we have room for the uh, for those. Okay. So after that's been all settled, we have to decide how our magma network should flow. So I really really want to have one option to um to get some fun on top of one of those uh, beasts. So we're going to make something like that. Yeah, I already can't see how this will work. So, uh, just realized that, uh, ah, I was wondering why the hell that door was open. Yeah, one of those ghosts has opened this door. This can happen. And now we have our web spinner no longer in place. And that's, my friends, why you want to have a bridge. Because otherwise, that thing would be now in my base. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to take care of uh, that in a hot minute. So, uh, yeah, now we have it looking like that. It's looking a little bit funky, but uh, it's totally uh, it's totally a-okay. We're almost done, actually. Nice. So, uh, yeah, our, our web spitter is now 
back in action. So I really need to um, put that uh, spirit to rest. I'll be right back once I did that. Okay, that's been taken care of. I just don't want no more doors that get opened. That's really unnerving me. So the next step is going to be the next pump. So we have those ramps now. And the thing is, wherever you dig a ramp, you remove the floor above as well. So the idea here is uh, that, oh, I think I need to rip out that wall first. The idea here is that we have a ways and means of power transmission this way, because screw pumps transmit power between each uh, each other, not only ver uh, not only on the same level but also above and below themselves. They basically can connect via axles, and therefore, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. So the problem, I th I hope it's going to be only the wall. Hope I didn't do any other mistake that I need to fix up in the time in between. Could you guys be kindly removing that wall now next? Because I guess this uh, this plot here is not accessible, therefore they have problems. So, let's see. needs ground near machine but there is ground okay so I need to yeah just like I thought I I need to check on this now all right so let's remove that thing probably it doesn't uh, it doesn't get automatically removed I hope it's only that so let's remove those guys go and now it should work yes so now we have a hole up above us where the trap power can be transmitted and the screw pumps can now be uh, put into place so green block green corkscrew green tube it's really important so we pump from this hole to that hole and now we reverse the direction to pump from this hole to that hole as soon as the ramp has been removed Again, I'm really, really careful here with these. And now last but not least, these here. So that's all the pumps. Wonderful. That's that's going uh, brilliantly. I For a moment, I was afraid that something didn't go according to plan, but no, no. It's all fine. So now we insert walls to make sure that the magma cannot uh, attack anybody. And as soon as the walls are set up, we can then go and uh, use the rest of this. So these doors here are really only um, maintenance doors to, to, to get access to these areas. The important door is that one for the dwarf in question. And now the thing is, we could now set up a gear assembly on this level and could now start and up a, a power generator you know we could put up a uh, water power generator and uh, just like that get this uh, problem under control okay speaking about getting problems under control so I know that this is a valuable web, web spitting monster yada 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 but uh, we also could use this for the removal of future monsters. I hope that I can get this uh, critter somehow back into his uh, into his box somewhere, somewhere later. Shouldn't be that much of a big issue. But, you know, if we would put a fortification in here, then we could easily uh, pump magma in here to kill off some forgotten beasts, and that would be quite dandy, wouldn't it? So the other thing that I want to do here is going to be now a huge good old magma chamber. There we go. So the last thing that I totally will leave up to you is now if you want to power that thing with dwarf power or not. So I want to explain also why I did this 
here, because if I would have built the pump stack at exactly this location, I always would have had one square here up above, which I would have had needed to floor and then put a ramp on it construction wise. And then we would need to construct walls here every time. So instead, I I decided to skip one, one part ahead. And the most beautiful part about all this is now that if you'd be using a automated power delivery system to that, you could now use this manual pump here as an on and off switch. This here only be done manually. These pumps here, driven automatically, would lead to a system where you could easily shut it on and off like you see fit by just setting up one one dude um, pump pumping there, and that's that. So here we're going to set up bridges. I'm going to make these bridges out of materials that are magma safe. I'm not exactly sure if things like these could catch fire, but I have heard of uh, of scenarios where where bridges catched fire. I'm not quite sure if it is in this de um, department, but if I've learned one thing about Dwarf Fortress, when in doubt, build it just safe, you know? If your sense of realism would say, oh, this could be a problem, listen to that sense of realism. Most of the time it's good for something. Alrighty. And so now we're going to set up the rest of that system here. One door and a wall. And this way we can even flood this entire thing. And by opening the door here, we could be even emptying it. Hmm. Okay. So, well. The rest of all this is now only a matter of uh, of setup, and I'm going to let these guys build those uh, those things um, off camera. So I'm going to showcase the the whole function once it's done, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get this into today's episode. You surely understand. So here's two things that I actually learned for myself that I actually didn't know. So point one, it's really important that the open lower tile is uh, right directly above the intake. That's pretty important. Also, if you are trying to build your screw pumps now according like that here, like from here to there, you will come across one problem here. Your building will remain um, inactive if you're unlucky, but this time it went off well. And if this uh, should happen, well, this is, uh, well, I'm quite surprised that it works now. Well, if it does not work, you need to put up a uh, gear assembly up above that uh, level to, um, well, to fixate that thing, so to say. The power transmission needs a, um, a fixation point, and if ever the construction might go inactive and stay like that, just drill a hole up above the place and set up something like that. Even a proxy like that will fixate the uh, screw, uh, will uh, fixate the screw pump. Took me a while to get behind it. So if your constructions are inactive, check out if your intake, if your uh, open floor tiling uh, starts at the intake. And if that's correct, just uh, try that out. So I'll be back once this machine is ready to get started. Okay. Finally, everything is in place. So here a few last words before we fire up the machine. I have dug out a third chamber here because this is going to be the place where I'm going to get rid of the excess magma. You know, this path here will be filled with magma after I turn off the machinery. And when we clank down that thing, we can just get rid of the excess, uh, excess slag. I have another pathway here, which we can maybe utilize creatively, whatever. And that part of thing here, the last uh, word of advice, I have forbidden the access to all of these chunks in here to, you know, make sure that there's going to be no accident heat death of dwarves, make sure that all doors and things that might interact with magma directly are locked, and then 
good to go. So we're starting this pump stack like that. If we'd had a water generator upstairs, we'd be only starting this baby down here manually. You can, of course, go like you want to. This is uh, totally up to you. So now people will start pumping that magma upstairs. The wonderful thing is that even if this guy here starts pumping and the rest of the crew ain't there yet the magma will be contained in that little chamber it doesn't flow into that direction weirdly enough it's safe and uh, it'll stay there until the next uh, dwarf in the in the line will stop doing his thing so here you see how it uh, looks like in action and uh, up here the chamber is now filling merrily with magma down here the whole crater gets drained. Now, here things get a little bit more complicated. As you see, the fluid slowly seeps towards the extraction point. There will be, in a very, very short amount of time, come the moment where we really don't uh, get much stuff in there again. And the Forgotten Beast is disturbing our merry, merry going uh, lava magma extraction. Jeez. It's actually. Yeah. Okay. So, but you see the concept here, the chamber is filling and everything is really, really okay. So give me a sec. I hope that I won't kill my entire military with that, but we're, uh, we're going to confirm that target. So up here, this chamber is now filling and we're basically now only waiting until the room is full. This might take a while because as you see there, we, we do take only from the topmost layer of the pit, so to say. You can make that more, yeah, well, you can make more throughput there if you manage to drain the pit for a while. You can do that by, I'm pausing the game here, by going downstairs and, for example, if I'd be punching a hole in this, uh, in this thing here and uh, I'd strongly suggest that you build a contraption around that you can seal off so you can empty the the basin for a while if you'd want to then the magma would drop and then i could build the entire pump stack below and then i could have a much much higher throughput but i didn't want to do this for this uh, basic example of a pump stack because that would be pretty advanced uh, dwarven um, engineering but you know, you get the idea. So, let's see. We're going to head on over to this little uh, massacre there. Yep, it forgotten beast. Nice. They're really coming into uh, and kicking into gear, those fellas. And as you see here, the uh, chamber is now almost full. And again, there is no risk, you know. The moment this chamber is full, there's uh, gonna be nothing any, uh, anymore. There, stuff is just going to sit there. I'm going to illustrate that. So as you see here, the chert is not melting. Obviously it's a magma safe stone. All the more important that I forbid the access to that because sometimes, you know, a stone cutter just does crazy things. All right. So as soon as the chamber is full, we're going to unassign those folks. It's only a matter of seconds now. And then we can use that chamber to build a magma workshop. And that will be exactly what we're after. Because when you got a magma workshop, you're not needing any charcoal anymore. You see, now it's all full of sevens. So now we can turn the pumps off. And that's that. So this is the basic, uh, the basics of a pump stack. You, you can utilize that all manner of different uh, ways and, oh, well, okay, the extraction method on the on the bottom level is, uh, well, I think we just lost a few dwarves. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. This, uh, this stuff here is, uh, I, I unlocked the wrong door, you know. The escape route would have been this direction. That was my bad. I'm sorry, guys. So uh, be smarter than me. Let them go this way because they won't get burned. As you see here, the stuff is not touching any of these tiles, so... Keep that in mind. That was a minor oversight, but you know, when you're when you're doing uh, these things, you're always doing science and you're always making new discoveries. So, don't worry if if stuff like that happens. You know. Anywho, I hope you found that helpful. This concept, of course, is applicable also to water. 
it's the same stuff, but uh, you don't need that many magma safe materials. And yeah, leave me your comments down below. Be a little bit sarcastic about the mistakes that I did, but I think illustrating that is very helpful so we see all the things that can possibly go wrong. And while I'm outroing this, I'm going to crank two levers here. And uh, let's see. This one. I'm sorry. Oh, this one didn't get, even get linked, so yeah, I'm I'm going to fix that in between the episodes, and uh, I remain with leave me a thumbs up, leave me a subscription, and next time we're going to set up that Mac workshop, and let's see what we'll do in between. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and see you next time.